over the last year and a half, I've put out right around 150 videos, and I think I've covered almost everything in Silhouette Studio. Today, we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to take all of those bits and pieces of information and put them together to create designs that we can use in our daily crafting. Once you learn how to put all of these tools together, you can basically create whatever design you want from scratch. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette, and you've found your way to Silhouette Success. I do hope that you're going to join our little community. The best way to learn anything is to practice. So I suggest that you watch this video on your phone or tablet while you have Silhouette Studio open on your computer. Follow along and be sure to pause if you need it. Back when I was using the Cameo 4 for all of my projects, I wanted an SVG of the Cameo, but I could not find one online. So I went ahead and I created this design here. It looks more like the Cameo 4 when it's actually turned on because the Cameo logo is up here and you can see the buttons on the panel here. Today we're going to recreate this little project with the Cameo 5. You can see that the Cameo 4 is more of a rectangular shape. The Cameo 5 is definitely more rounded. So we may have our work cut out for us here, but we're going to give it a go. Let's start with a regular rectangle to represent the body. That is our basic shape that we're going to work with. Let's fill it in with black. Now we need to work on these curves a bit. Draw out an ellipse. You want to keep it about the same height as the rectangle we already have going on. And I'm going to make it kind of skinny and then pull it over and line it up. We can duplicate that and pull it over to the other side. Select all three of those pieces, right click and weld. Now one of the details that stands out most to my eye is this little lip here. So let's grab a rounded rectangle for that. With the rounded rectangles, you need to right click and convert to path. We can fill that in with color and let's set that up close but not quite touching. I think that's a pretty good representation. Now we're going to work on the logo here. We can start with a circle. To create a perfect circle, hold down your shift key and drag that out. And we will need a capital S. And I found that Engravers MT is pretty close to their font. It's not exact, but it's close. Get that all adjusted, select both, right click, and make a compound path. Let's zoom in here to take a look, fill it with white, and you can see that this piece here is going to be an issue. We can just double click to bring up the editing points and delete what we don't need. Now we can fix the rest of these by just pulling them a little bit closer. When this line is lit up in red, we can click on Make Curve. We don't want it that curved. So we can grab this blue square here and just pull it in and adjust it. Next, we can type out Silhouette. And the Arial font is close. But let's open up the textile panel, type in silhouette in the preview box. And I think that is a little bit closer. It's a bit skinnier. The T's are still not quite right, but it's close. We can fill that in with white as well and shrink it down a bit. Select all of the pieces. Let's turn our cut lines to no color. And I think that is pretty good. Right click on all of that and group. Now let's get a little more complicated and see if we can't duplicate the machine with it open. Once again, we're going to start with a rectangle. You can draw that out and fill it with black. 
Again, these sides are rounded. So grab an ellipse and draw that out. I'm going to fill this with a different color for right this moment so that we can see what we're doing with it. Now, if we line that up like we did before, it's okay, but to my eye, it kind of comes out more at the bottom. So let's grab this green circle and rotate it just a bit. Now we can right click and duplicate that, right click and flip horizontally and drag this circle down to the other end and get it lined up. Then we can select all three of those pieces, right click and weld. Double click to bring up your editing points. Let's zoom in here. It looks like we have a few extra that we don't need. Let's try to zoom in again. I think I got the wrong one there. That looks better. Go to the other side and do the same thing. And fit to window. That's a better basic shape than we had going on. Next, I want to work on this side here. You can see that it is a rectangle with curves. It's not a rounded rectangle. So let's grab the rectangle from our drawing tools and pull that out. Double click to bring up the editing points. We want the side line to be lit up and we can click on make curve. Seems a little bit drastic. Let's rein that in a bit. Now we need to do the same thing with this side. Highlight it and make curve. And you can see that the curve is going the wrong way. Let's grab our little blue boxes and just pull them right in to the inside. You want them to mirror this angle here. Now to give it a little bit of contrast, I'm going to fill it with a gray instead of a black. And it does need a little bit of adjusting, so let's double click to bring up the editing points. We can get this one here and pull it over and adjust this blue square. We want it to follow this curve on the outside. It probably won't be exact, but we can get it close. That looks good. Now let's move this one in a bit. Fit to window. That adds a little bit of depth. This panel over here is more like a slanted rectangle. So let's grab our rectangle and draw that out. Go ahead and fill it with the lighter gray color and get it kind of set in place here. If we open up our transform panel, we can go to the last tab, which is shear. And let's try 15 degrees to start with think that's too much. 10 actually looks perfect. Let's grab a guideline from the top. Just click. That blue line will appear and you can pull it down and that can help us line up the bottom of our side panels. I do not want it to snap to guides, however. When snap to guide is on, when you click on the object, it's going to set it right at the guideline. So now we need to move the guideline up to the top and adjust that. All right, now our panels are the same height. We can delete this guide. We don't need it anymore. Now let's go ahead and duplicate that and scale it down just a bit and set that to black and that will mimic our touchpad here. We can recreate the up and down arrows by going to our flexi shapes and grabbing this one here. Click and draw that out and it's quite skinny. So let's get it skinny. Right click and convert that to path and fill that with white. I got it just a little bit crooked. That looks better. Set the cut line to no color and duplicate. 
Now we can right click and flip vertically. And we have our up and down arrow keys. They are too large though, so let's shrink that down quite a bit. Now we can go ahead and duplicate that one, right click, flip vertically, and pull that over just a bit. We have a rounded rectangle type lip at the bottom, so let's work on that. Grab the rounded rectangle and just draw that out. It is fairly skinny, but it's also straight at the bottom. Fill it with black, convert to path, and then grab our knife tool, hold down our shift key, and just kind of slice it in half. We can delete the bottom part, we don't need that. And then we can use the arrow keys on our keyboard to bump it into place. The next thing I want to duplicate is this front bar here where the roller set. We're going to use a rounded rectangle again. Draw that rounded rectangle out and keep it fairly skinny. This is too wide, but that's okay. We can fix that in a minute. Let's fill it in with white. Convert to path. Kind of get it set in place and shrink it down using that center square there. Let's make it just a bit skinnier. By leaving a little bit of room on the side here, it's giving it just a bit of depth again. There's another bar in the back for the blade carriage. So let's right click, duplicate, and set this one back a little bit further. Now you can see, because I made it skinnier, our center dot is gone. We can't shrink it down that way. So let's go up to our width and experiment a little bit. We'll try 7.25 and see how that does. Use the arrow keys to bump it over. I think that looks great. And this is creating more depth because this one is shorter than this one. So it appears it is going backwards. The blade carriage is a little bit difficult. I did give this go earlier. And I just ended up creating a rectangle for the most part. I filled it in with gray instead of black. And we can scale that down quite a bit. And then I kind of did a blade. Some of this is not going to be perfect. Again, we're creating an SVG, not an exact replica here. When you adjust these red dots, it adjusts the amount of curve to the rectangle. I think that looks okay, so we can right click and convert to path. The blade is white, and the blade also has a flat back. So let's grab our knife tool, hold down our shift key, and just slice it right across the top. Right click and delete. There is also kind of a curve here, that should give it a little more depth. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. We can make this a little bit darker for a shadow effect. Bring that to the front. And again, we're going to use our knife tool to cut it off. Let's go ahead and group these together and we can set that right in here. It is kind of large, let's scale it down. Next I wanna work on the lid. Let's use a rectangle for this. Set that to black, bring up the editing points. We're going to turn this line to a curve and this line to a curve, select that editing point and pull, start pulling it back over this way and then do the same for the other side. We can bump that down a little bit. We want just a small gap. Then we can use our arrow key to line that up a little bit better and we will need to shrink this side down. Just push that right in there. 
Now, because everything looks really good setting where it's at, I'm going to select all of that right click and group that together. The only thing I want to add to this now is our rollers here. We can do this with a rounded rectangle. Right click, convert to path. Let's create an internal offset that's kind of thick. I think that looks okay. So we can select both, right click, make a compound path, and these should be the dark gray. Let's duplicate this. And you can see this one is kind of sheared off to this side, and this one is kind of sheared off to this side, again, giving it the three-dimensional look. Of course, these are going to be too large, so let's try to get them scaled down, and then we can work on getting the shear correct. Back to the Transform panel. Shear. Let's do Custom again. I think 10 is good for that. Let's try a negative 10 for this. And I'm going to bump that over just a little bit. I think it's too close to the edge. Now we have our smaller roller bars. So we're doing the rounded rectangle. Let's convert that to path, fill it with the gray, right click and duplicate. And we are going to line those up, double click on the top one and zoom in so we can see our editing points. Let's select this one, hold down our shift key and select this one and use the right arrow key to bump them over a little bit. We want it tapered in the front, again, just to give a little bit of depth. Do the same thing for this side. Let's bump that bottom one up a little bit so they match a little bit better. I think that's okay. Now grab both of those, right click and weld. Fit this back to the window so we can see what we're doing. We can bring that in, scale it down, and I think that looks pretty close. So let's select that, duplicate, and move it on over. Select everything. I'm going to turn the cut lines to no color, right click, and group. If you have made it this far, pat yourself on the back. Good job. If you have any questions about anything that we covered today, the answers can typically be found in this playlist here. Now go create something amazing, and I'll see you in the next video.